If a company goes bankrupt, should employees lose their pensions? Well, of course not. There is new legislation before Parliament to protect pensions, but will it have unintended consequences? And if you don't have a company pension, what do you care? Ted and I recorded this podcast three weeks ago, and then after we recorded it, Bill C-228 had third reading in the House of Commons on November 23rd, 2022, and passed unanimously. How often does that happen? Pretty much never. Never. Pay but raises. It, but it did. <laughs> exactly. When they're they're raising their pay. The bill then passed first reading in the Senate on November 24th. So it's likely the bill will pass and become law at some point in 2023. What does this mean for you? Ted and I discuss it starting right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Okay, Ted, let's start with the basics. What is a pension plan? Well, it's something that uh, most of the people that are under 40 will never see. But for those of you who have one or have even heard of this, it's a it's a fund that the employees and their employers pay into to to see that when you stop working for the company uh, in the form of retirement, as opposed to when they let you go, that you get some sort of monthly income. Think of it like this. You've, you're you're making a paycheck now. They take a little piece of it and they set it aside for the future. Simple enough. Okay. Now, there are two basic kinds. There's a defined contribution plan and a defined benefit plan. This is very right. important for the purpose of the show. What's the right. difference? So a defined contribution is the set amount uh, the amount that's going into the pension every year is set. It's a defined contribution. And that's the the vast majority of pension plans that still exist in this day. There's one group of employees that have the other type, which would be the defined benefit. And that's guaranteeing you a monthly payment, no matter what the contribution requirements are to get into. And that would be the government. The government. Uh, the government. Yes. If you're a government employee, then you probably have a defined benefit plan. So defined contribution, this is how much goes in defined benefit, this is how much much comes out. Regardless of what was put in. Regardless of what was put in. So an RRSP, which is not a pension plan, although it's called a registered retirement uh, savings plan, is, if anything, a defined contribution plan. Correct. Because you can put in up to a certain limit, and when you retire, well, whatever's there is there. That's right. There is no guarantee as to what will be there at the end. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, an example of this would be, an example of a defined benefit plan would be you get, we, we're going to guarantee you a pension of 55% of your average last five years salary. Yeah, and right. that's what they used to be. And that would be, a t- so I could do the math, okay, yeah. I'm going to be guaranteed a pension of 2000 bucks a month. Right. Okay, so I think you already answered this question, but if I work for an employer that provides a pension, that is part of my compensation then. That's right. In fact, so there's the hourly wage that you earn, but there's also whatever that contribution portion is. Many employers will say, you know, we'll match the contributions that you make. That's more talking about RSPs than is for pensions. Pensions are definitely, if they're putting money aside for your future, well, you're still going to have some kind of tax implication, although it's reduced because you're going to get taxed on it in the future. At the end. So if I've got a choice between two different jobs, one has a defined benefit pension plan and one doesn't. It's fine. Okay. And let's say, you know, I could go work for the government or I could go work for a a company that doesn't have a pension plan. Right. And the the company that doesn't have a pension plan is willing to pay me $20 an hour. The government job is going to pay me $19 an hour. Let's say Hmm. the jobs are exactly the same in what I have to work and everything. Right. The difference, they're paying me a dollar less, but I'm going to get a pension in the future. Right. And that pension is probably going to be 55% of your last year's salary. And so whether the dollar is the right number or not, but that kind of emphasizes your point that a pension is deferred compensation. That's right. They're paying me notionally a little bit less now, but that's because they're putting money aside. They're going to keep paying you later, even after you stop working. Yep. Okay. So that, that makes it sense. That makes sense. Now- now we get into the the harder stuff here. Okay. So let's say I'm an employer. Well, actually, I am an employer. You are an employer. So are you. And I want to offer my employees a defined benefit pension plan. Okay. <laughs> so I think this is a way to get more employees in this competitive environment. Okay? Sure. And we're going to keep this really simple yep. and say that I have a 1,000 employees mm-hmm. and they're all identical. Okay. They're all exactly the same. They're all 45 years old. They all earn $50,000 a year and their annual pension is going to be 55% of their best five years. So how much money... Do I need to put into the pension every year so that 20 years from now when they're retired, there's enough money there? So 
Are they actually going to retire in 20 years? I don't know. Is it going to be 60, 65, 69, 72? Know. Never? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So we need to have that. So we need to know how long a period of time we've got. Uh, we have to calculate, well, what do we think their pay is going to be, that defined benefit? So if they're retiring tomorrow, 55% of 50,000, they make 27.5. Uh, but I have to assume that there's going to be some sort of COLA clauses and increase wages for these people over the next COLA, 20, cost 25. of living uh, <laughs> oh, I'm adjustment. Using, yes, ooh, you're I shouldn't the, be using, using the fancy words, right? pension term, yeah. So we have to estimate what we think their salary is going to be in that year before they retire. And then, okay, what's 55% of that? What kind of returns are we going to get on whatever money we put into the pension plan? So we've got a defined benefit. We have to pay those people X amount of dollars. We've got to make sure we've got those dollars there. And then, of course, you know, how long are they going to live after they retire? So if the guy's only going to live for three years, I don't need to have nearly as much money set aside as if I'm going to be paying that pension for 25 years. Yeah, or 40. Like, or who 40. knows? That's who knows right. how long the guy well, I'm going to live forever. I tell I my know. children that you, every day. You are virtually <laughs> immortal. Well, you're certainly going to live on in the podcast, if nothing else. <laughs> so that all sounds pretty complicated. I My employees are 20 years from retirement, but I don't know when they retire or how long or what the fund will earn. Yeah. So how am I supposed to do the math on all this? Man, you can't. The, there's a, I cannot do it. There's a profession out there called actuaries, actuaries, actuarial sciences. And these are people that don't just like math. They love math. And this is what they do. So what they do is they, they do the math and they say, okay, we're going to estimate the wages of every employee, how long they're going to yeah. live, what their pay is going to be. In the language that the kids use now, they're going to create an algorithm with all of these variables uh, that they can, they can produce a chart that says, well, the probability that you will live this long is X, you'll retire at this point, you'll need this much money. They, it's all it's math it's to all the nth math. degree. And so what they say to me is, okay, Mr. Employer, you have to put in this much money this year so that your pension plan is fully funded so that as the employees start to retire, the money is there. Right. Now, of course, some years my investments will go up a lot because this pension plan is invested in stuff. Right. We put we put it in stocks and bonds and whatever. And back in, you know, 2021, the stock market went up. Sure. At the end of 2022, not so much. Um, so the amount I have to put in each year may go up and down based on market conditions and, and so on. So now let's do the history lesson. Okay. Everybody likes history, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. There's lots more, but here's two. In 2009, Nortel went bankrupt. That yep. Canadian example everybody likes to drag exactly. out, Nortel. Yep. And Nortel, of course, was a telecommunications company. It was a giant. A giant. In fact, it was, I believe, by market cap, the biggest company on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Yeah, I can believe that. And I think it was biggest by a wide margin. Yep. So every pension fund, every investor owned it. It was a, it was a huge company. They ended up in 2009 going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And their employees got a payout of less than the full amount they were supposed to get. And right. this was after many years of fighting. Another company everybody's heard of, Sears. Mm -hmm. In 2017, they went bankrupt. And their employee pensions were cut a lot. Right. What happened in the in the Sears case? Well, so they were, they were promised a set amount of money, and the money wasn't there. And so when the company went bankrupt, it was, sorry, I can't, you know, blood from a stone. Too bad, you're screwed. <clears throat> right. So... I said in the intro that there is legislation before Parliament to deal with this issue. I'm going right. to read from Hansard. I know you have a subscription to Hansard. I do. Yeah, I read it every morning when I get up. Hansard is the transcript of discussions <laughs> in the House of Commons and the Senate. And so I'll put a link to this, but they give a little bit of history. Between 2005 and 2013, Sears Canada paid more than $3 billion in dividends to shareholders even as it was operating at a loss and its pension plan was underfunded by about $133 million. Right. In 2017, Sears Canada declared bankruptcy after attempting to restructure, leaving more than 17,000 pensioners cheated of their full pensions. Now, I went online and I checked. As of May of 2021, Sears pensioners were receiving 86% of their pension entitlement. Okay, so if they were supposed to be getting two thousand dollars under their defined benefit yeah. pension plan, they were getting about seventeen hundred bucks. They were getting about seventeen hundred bucks. So, and when Sears first went bankrupt, they thought the shortfall was going to be even larger than that's, that. That's right. They were going to get nothing. We've had decent stock market returns since then, so they've kind of chipped away at that. But I think 
you and I would both agree they got screwed. I mean, that's, sure. that's not fair. Yeah. I was promised 2000 bucks a month. There's someone out there who probably worked at Sears for 40 years. They were expecting 2000 bucks a month. They, they structured their retirement for that. And now they're getting 1720 bucks a month. Yep. It, it, you know, clearly is, is not fair. And so where did the money go? Where did the money go? Well, and and we know that you because just us, right? I just told you, yeah, because yeah. in the you know many years before their bankruptcy, they were paying out dividends to shareholders, right? And there's nothing wrong with paying out dividends to shareholders. Shareholders sort of expect that's them. kind of why you want to be a shareholder, right? But what they should have been doing before paying the dividends to shareholders is putting the money in the pension sure the fund was fully funded because the actuary said it wasn't fully funded. They right. knew there was $133 million share, uh, shortfall, but they were still giving it out to the shareholders. Yep. So what happens then when a company goes bankrupt? You and I are both licensed insolvency trustees. Yep. We do not do corporate bankruptcies anymore, we but certainly we, don't do pension plans. We don't do them, but we, we <laughs> have done them in our, in our past. So very Big level conceptually, what yeah. happens when a company goes bankrupt? So when a, a company goes bankrupt, the trustee steps in and tries to realize on the assets of the company. That means they turn whatever they can find in that company into cash, and then they distribute that cash uh, based on a series of legal priorities. So some people are entitled to money before others. Who's the first guy on the list? The government's the usually government. the first guy the on government. the list for things like deemed trusts. So payroll deductions, uh, HST, that sort of stuff. Uh, employees rank pretty high, but it's limited. Yeah. So the government is first and a deemed trust is anything that the employer has taken from someone and is supposed yeah. to forward on to yeah. the government. They've collected on behalf of the government. So it's not their money in the first place. Right. Em- employers, businesses are bill collectors for the government. That's right. We're collection agents for yeah. the government. And the simple one is just your sales tax, but also... Uh, any employee withholdings you take off of, of you know, the income tax, EP, EI, CPP, those are all deemed trusts. The right. employee's money goes to the government. The employer took it for the government. Yeah, and so the, the employer mm. has to be very careful that they take that money and send it to the government. Otherwise, right. the directors of the corporation are in trouble. Are They're in the trouble. Board, They're yeah. personally responsible for it. Okay, so the order of priority then, you're the trustee. You've sold off the inventory and the equipment and everything. you got a bunch of cash. The first bit goes to the government. For the deemed trust. Right. The next bit goes to the secured creditors. Yep. And then the rest goes to everyone else. What is a secured creditor? So a secured creditor is somebody that's lent the company uh, money to buy a specific asset. And they've said, well, if you don't pay us for the asset, we can take it back. So if you have a mortgage on your house, that's a secured creditor. A car loan. Car loan. You don't pay for the car, they can take your car. So it's exactly the same in the world of business. That's right. Okay. So here's the problem. If the actuaries do the math... And the pension, and they determine the pension plan has a funding shortfall, and the company goes bankrupt, and the company and the, the trustee, you mm-hmm. know, sells the inventory and equipment, they do and all the things we're supposed to do. do, all that stuff, and there's a a pension shortfall. Um, it goes to the secured creditors, and that means there may not be any money left over for anybody else. for anybody else, including the pension, including the pension. Yep. And the employees and, and all that. And and I happen to have some ex- expertise in this area because many years ago when I was a young man. We're going to call this consolidated credit? Uh, consolidated life. What the, were they called? Yeah. Uh, we're not going to say. But <laughs> I, I used to work for two big accounting firms, yep. as, as did you. Right. I worked for KPMG and then PwC. And one of my jobs, because I was doing corporate insolvency at the time, was I would go into a company that was in trouble. So the mm-hmm. bank would phone us up and say, ah, this this guy's in trouble. We we want you to figure out whether we should continue loaning or or call the loan. Right. So I'd go in and I'd say to the owner, well, dude, here's your choice. You can cooperate with me or the bank's pulling the plug tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I'll cooperate with you. <laughs> Funny how that works. So I'd get out my my pencil and paper and I'd say, okay, the bank has security over your stuff. How much stuff do you got? Well, I got some inventory. Great. Let's figure out what the inventory is actually worth. Right. So I'd actually go out in the, the factory or the warehouse make and make sure, sure it's really there, there. And, yeah. and do some counts. And then we've got some equipment. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to call in my liquidator guy and he'll tell me how much this table would sell for in your equipment. Yep. And then your accounts receivable, the money that your customers owe you, I would do this. I had the same spreadsheet every time. Right. How old was the receivables? Therefore, how much we can collect. And so I would figure out what everything would be worth in a liquidation scenario. Mm-hmm. And But before going to the bank and telling them the number, I would do the analysis you just said, which right. is I would figure out what comes first. Right. 
So, okay, you haven't paid your source deductions in the last six months. They come first. They come first. So even though there might be a million dollars worth of stuff there, if there's half a million owing to the government, well, bank, you're only getting half a million. Right. So under existing law, yes, if there is a pension shortfall and the company goes bankrupt, the bank gets paid first after the, the government. Right. So an obvious solution to all this. Let's change the law. Change the law. We will invert the priorities, as we mm -hmm. say in our business, and we will make pension shortfalls rank higher than secured creditors. So right now it's the government gets their deemed trust, then the secured creditors, then everybody else. We could just say, okay, the government, they're always going to be first. We can't, you know, do, but then the next guy to get paid is the pension shortfall and then the secured creditors. Right. There is a bill before the House of Commons. Bill C-228. What's the title of this bill? Read an, it out for an us. An act to amend the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act, the Company Creditors Arrangement Act, and the Pensions Benefit Standards Act, 1985. Ah, so a nice, simple, short Certainly, title. Yes. It had third reading on November 18th, 2022. Time to go to the floor. Ta yeah, well, it's yeah, it was it was on the floor, and they've they've had uh, discussions on it. That quote I read from Hansard earlier was from the debate debate on November 18th. Yeah. What this bill would do is create a super priority for any amount required to liquidate any other unfunded liability or solvency deficiency in the pension fund. Right. So two key points. Number one, pension shortfalls would rank ahead of secured creditors. Right. And number two, it's a private member's bill, which how many of those ever get passed into law? Well, that's right. Virtually none. But in this case, it has support from the Everybody. Conservatives, the Bloc Québécois, and the NDP. And all of those three guys have more votes than the governing liberals. <laughs> so even if the liberals don't want to support it, they, they have the ability to push it through. I don't see why the liberals wouldn't support it. Right. So if I'm an employee of an employer that has a pension plan and my employer may someday go bankrupt, this is fantastic news. Sure. What's the downside? What am I missing? Well, so I'm going to take a bank now that had a, a second ranking priority behind the government and I'm making them third. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm the bank... I'm going to take a much closer look at how quickly I should pull the plug on a business. So that analysis that you just did, well, we said, okay, we got enough to pay the government. There's still enough for us. Wait a minute. There's enough to pay the government, enough to pay the pension plan. Now there's not enough for us. You're out of a job because I'm not getting paid. Right. So so I'm a, a company and I want to expand. Yeah. I want to build a factory. I want to hire some employees, whatever. I don't have the money. Right. You got to use other people's money. Right. So I go to the bank and I say, hey, I would like a loan for, you know, $50 million. Right. And the bank says, yeah, but wait a minute, you have a pension plan. We better and I take go, a look at yeah, it. yeah, everything's good. Mm -hmm. And they go, okay, we want to see the actuaries report and everything. I say, well, here you go. And maybe my pension plan is fully funded. Right, but it might not be tomorrow. But it might not be tomorrow. So the bank goes, you know what? I think what we're going to do, we, we were going to lend you $100 million, but we're going to hold a bit of that aside. We're only going to lend you 80 Right. Now, if I actually have a shortfall in my pension, well, they're not lending we'll me any. at all. That's right. If this new legislation comes into effect. So, okay, I need a hundred million to build this factory so I can hire all these employees and give them jobs. If I can only borrow 80 million, I, I guess, guess I I'm not do doing it. it. Or I'm doing it smaller. Or I'm doing it in Alabama. <laughs> there you, uh, yeah, somewhere <laughs> else where the, the laws don't apply. So, right. so there is the potential that this actually hurts workers because it creates fewer, fewer jobs. So any Anyone who's employed with a company that's somehow at risk or on the cusp right now financially, if they need to refinance, this would basically make that much more expensive and much more difficult. And therefore, your job is at risk. Now, you and I, already, you already said this at the beginning of the show. Yeah. How many companies have a defined benefit yeah. pension plan? Very few. Very few. And the only ones that do are companies that have the relationship with huge unions and they've been in place for a very long time. They're legacy plans. Right. They've been there for 50 years. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Maybe some of the big new companies, you know, the Amazons of the world, and I, we didn't do any research before the show, so I don't know if they have a pension plan or not. Right. Leave a note in the comments if you have actually done any research. And you work for Amazon and yeah, have a pension? Let us know. <clears throat> um, I mean, they certainly have some kind of retirement something or other. They I must. don't know if it's defined benefit, defined contribution, RSPs, whatever. But the point is that um, if I'm a company thinking, well, it's a competitive environment, maybe if I created a pension plan, right. I would be able to attract more employees. Or the other retain thing, more employees. Retain more employees. Right. Explain, explain that. How does a pension plan help you retain employees? Well, so 
you have to assume that when you're paying people, you got to pay them the market rate. Otherwise, they're going to go someplace else. Well, the pension is like that it's dessert after the meal. You know, I'm going to pay you now, but I'm also going to make sure I look after you in the future. And that's attractive to a lot of people. Now, if I've been working for the company for 10 years, I've built up a bit of a pension. Right. Isn't that the golden handcuffs? Because if I go and work for someone else, well, now I'm not getting any more contributions to that pension. Yeah. At some point, your pension vests with you. So you'd have to figure out exactly what that term is. Oh, yeah. Is, and, but... and so let's say it vests after two years or right. whatever. So I know I'm getting the pension. Yep. But if I keep working for this company for another 10 years, my pension will be that much higher. Right. But if I go into another company now, I'm not, the, the pension isn't growing at the same level. Correct. Isn't it more likely then I'm more likely to stay with a company that has a pension if I've already been there? Depending on your age, sure. Yeah. So there's right. a, there is a competitive advantage to that. Now, yep. if you're an employer, you're taking all the risk, mm -hmm. particularly with this new legislation. If you want to do something for your employees, if you want to have a pension plan, are you not more likely to have a defined contribution plan rather than a defined benefit plan? Most definitely. Because? Because it's safer and more secure for you. You know exactly what you got to pay. You only have to demonstrate that you made the required contributions every year. You did what you had to do. It's not subject to the varies in the market or any kind of changes in the future you have no control over. Right. So I say to my employees, here's the deal. I'm going to put... You know, a thousand bucks a year into your pension or whatever the number is, five percent of your pay, yep. whatever it is, and we're going to invest it in, you know, obvious things, the stock market, bonds, whatever. Right. And if the bonds and the market goes up, you're going to have more of a retirement. If not, you're not. But I, you know, whatever happens, happens. Right. And as an employee, it's like, well, that's kind of how my RSP works. So I guess I understand that. Yep. Uh, not that, not that big a deal. I would prefer to have something locked in, but I guess if my well, choice is this or not. But it, it, um, it makes it much more common that a company is going to say, well, we'll just match your RSP contributions. And they put the whole onus on you. So if you save for tomorrow, we'll match it or contribute towards it. If you don't save at all, then why should we? You're obviously not concerned with it. Right. And that's exactly what we've done here at Hoy's Michaelis. Right. We've been doing that for, I don't know, a decade or two that, Long okay, down, employees, we'll, we will contribute you contribute, we'll match it. You get to choose what the investment goes into, high risk, low risk, right. whatever. Well, it's their asset. It's your asset. It has nothing nothing to do with us. Yep. Bill C20 Bill C228 includes a 4-year time period for coming into force. Yes. Because you want to give employers time to address any unfunded liabilities that they may have. So, okay, that kind of makes sense. We're giving you some warning if, you know, we've had a bad year or two, you've got some time to catch up. So my question to you, do you support this legislation? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? What, what's, your, what's your overall thoughts on that? So my, my first reaction to this is I'm not sure giving somebody a four-year time frame to do this is a good idea when you're heading into a recession. Mm -hmm. So if it, they're likely to be underfunded, now is the time that it's going to be very difficult for them to correct that problem. So that the timing of this is not very good. Four years is probably adequate. It, I guess it depends on the amount of the underfunding. But uh, the under the overall concept of the whole thing, it, it makes a certain amount of sense. So I'm not against it. I don't know that it's going to make a big difference to individuals, people's lives, because there's so few of these uh, defined benefit plans out there anymore. Yeah, and I would assume that the government-defined benefit plans are fully funded. They don't have to be because they'll just take it out of the right. revenues from the next year. Yeah, they they can you know increase taxes or whatever, and it it always works. So, um, I don't know what my opinion on this is because <laughs> I didn't do enough show prep to really ponder it. I mean, I I definitely believe employees should not be getting screwed. I mean that yeah. that to me is a no brainer. Um, and w looking at the Sears example, the reason the pension plan was underfunded was because the owners of the company stripped it. They were taking dividends right. out when the profit was not sufficient to allow them to do that. Well, and if they'd reduced those dividends by 5%, the, the pension would have been fully wouldn't have, funded. Wouldn't have been a big deal. So if I was going to create a law mm -hmm. and nobody asked me, <laughs> but if they did, I would say, okay, the law is you can't pay a dividend if your company has liabilities in excess of that amount. Right. So like the bank is going to have a covenant in the, the bank loan that says you can't pay a dividend if you're behind on your loan payments to us. Right. And so why not have the same thing for a, a pension plan? You, you, the actuary tells you here's what the underfunding is. Yep. You cannot pay a dividend to the shareholders until that shortfall is covered. 
So there's got to be a downside to doing that. Well, the downside is the shareholders wouldn't get as much money. Right. They wouldn't be able to strip a company bare. Okay. So, but to me, if I had to create a law, that would be the law that you have to make sure your pension is funded. Right. And I understand businesses get into trouble (laughs) and they end up going bankrupt. Right. And the year before they go bankrupt, they're not paying their taxes. They're not paying their source deductions. They're not contributing to the pension fund. So I understand how a shortfall can happen. Right. But I don't believe the owners should be sucking money out when the employees aren't are getting paid. So if I was right. to create a law, that's how it would work. Now, how would that law work? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how it works. Mm-hmm. I, I, there is a there is some kind of solvency test, I'm sure, when you're paying dividends. Oh, there and there's there are clauses dealing with dividends in the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act, right? Right. So, but clearly they weren't sufficient in the in the. Uh, and the, how do you recover them from a largely held public company? How do you recover how do you recover? The money? Yeah. So you've you've basically got to have a rule that prevents them from doing it in the first place. Correct. That's what it comes yep. down to. Okay. So practical implications. You happen to be an employee that works at that one company in Canada that has a pension plan that is a defined benefit (laughs) pension plan. And, you know, if you know that there's a shortfall, well, what what are the practical implications of that? So so what would you be doing if you were an employee in that scenario? Particularly the more advanced you get in years, and you know I turned 61 this year. Yes, you're a very old man. Mm, That's right. You, the pension becomes a greater and greater concern. So a 25-year-old employee probably doesn't want to look to see, okay, is the pension plan fully funded because it's 40 years from now? I don't know that I'm even going to be here. The 60-year-old employee is critically concerned with, is that pension fund fully funded? Is it going to be available for me when I want to retire? Yeah, and so if there is any hint that it isn't fully funded, I'd be squawking and yelling and talking to my union rep. and Making my, some noise somewhere because this has got to be dealt with. Now, what if you are the vast majority of Canadians who work at a company that doesn't have a pension plan? Right. So why do you care about anything that we're talking about today? Well, so company pension plans are designed to make sure that companies look after their employees after they retire. It's a way of saying thank you for the years of service. And in most places, place they paid for it somehow because it's part of their compensation package. The folks that don't have a company pension plan rely on the government money. So the more people that rely on the government money for their pensions, the old age supplement, the guaranteed income, all of those things, the less each of us is going to get. So if you're a regular Canadian and the only pension you're going to have is CPP and OAS, the more people that are participating in those things, the lower the dollars are going to be. Yeah. So it, it affects the overall big picture of, of the world. And and obviously it's, it's a competitive thing too. Right. If there is a company out there that has a defined benefit pension plan and as a result is paying their employees a little bit less because we're putting the money away for the future, but they're not putting it away for the future, right. then that's really bad for everyone else because now wages get suppressed because, hey, they're paying $19 an hour, so I guess my my existing employer doesn't have to pay me that much more, but they're not really setting it aside. So right. I think it is better that we all agree on what the rules are and actually follow them. Sure. Well, I'm throwing the, the, the gig workers. That, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no pensions when you're a gig worker. No anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think that's it. It really needs to be a level playing field for all. I mean, I know yep. you're a huge hockey fan, and you watch all the, the of course, you watch all the matches on the on the pitch every every week. <laughs> you know, there's a touchdown. Ru- yeah, there you go. There's a rule in <laughs> hockey that you can't take your hockey stick and go whacking at everybody. Yeah, what kind of rule is that? Yeah, I know. Isn't that why people watch? Exactly. Well, <laughs> the reason we have the rule is because we all agreed that okay, it's probably better if we don't go go whacking yeah. ourselves. So, so right. whether it's a good rule or not isn't the issue. It's okay, we've agreed that that's what the rule is. So everybody I think everybody understands. Yeah, everyone understands. So I think when it comes to pensions, then okay, same we thing. should we should it's exactly the same thing. So okay, so my concluding comment is that as you are heading into retirement, or even if you're 25 years old, you should always be thinking ahead to what are all of the realistic sources of retirement income that I'm going to get. You already listed some of them. Well, you get CPP, you get OAS, you might get the GIS, depending on what your income is. Right. Hopefully you've got some savings, your own RSP, and maybe you've also got a, a company pension plan. If that company pension plan wasn't there, or if my RSP wasn't there, if stock markets get hit, whatever, how much do I need to retire? How much do I need to be putting aside today? The sooner you think about those things, the better. Sure. Well, if that 25-year-old were to sock away as much money as possible for 10 years and then stop, they'd still have more money than if the 55-year-old started socking it away 
for their last 10 years of working. So the yeah, sooner you do this stuff, the better. But. Right. And the other commercial part of the show here is you should be reducing your debt well before retirement. Sure. You do not want to be retired with debt. Yes. So if you've got a bunch of debt when you retire, you need to have more retirement income to service the debt. That's so right. since the show is called Debt Free in 30, I had to get the word yeah, debt in there, like that. there somewhere. So I think that's the other component. How much can I earn in, in my, my, all my pensions in retirement, but can I reduce my expenses by not having debt leading? What do I need to live on? Or there how am go. I going to be able to live on what I have? There you go. So you are now all up to speed on Bill C-228. Um, it will no doubt get some media coverage if and when it gets passed. Um, I don't know if it will or it won't, but it's already advanced to third reading. So that will pass. Will it get royal assent? <laughs> well, the, we got a new king. I right. don't, see, I don't see why he wouldn't sign. I assume that's how it works. I mean, yeah, okay, it's got to go through the Senate <laughs> and everything. But if all parties are supporting of it, why and the other, it? the other thing is it doesn't cost the government any money. Right. So why wouldn't they support it? There's yep. really, really There's no, no downside. downside. So I suspect it will pass, but we'll see. At least we've given you the background on it. That is our show for today. I will put links in the show notes to the actual legislation, to the Hansard stuff, some other stuff we've prepared on this exact topic. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. Um, otherwise, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You know the routine. Keep the algorithm on our side. Until next week, that is our show. Thanks for listening. I'm Doug Hoyes. That was Debt Free in 30.